Richard Carapaz perhaps paying the price for his Tour de France, Tokyo double and Movistar looking strong at the end of this mountaintop finish, the first of the Vuelta so far. Coming on stage three, a long stage, 203 kilometers, finishing with the Picon Blanco climb, which should be familiar to Vuelta a Burgos aficionados. Pretty straightforward stage before that, before the 7K, 9% climb, which GC teams would take it up. Would Landa try and take back all the time he lost in the uh, TT on stage one? No, there would be no GC action or interest in controlling this break at the start of the stage. But despite that, there were still some pretty big GC gaps later. In this break, we had Kenny Alessandro, Rain Tarame, Joe Dombrowski, Tobias Bayer, the young Austrian on Alperson Phoenix. And it fell to Jumbo Visma to control the stage. Robert Hessing, Hofstede and Van Hoydonk working and they didn't have too much interest in trying to set up a stage win for Primoz Roglic, who was the heavy favorite before the stage started. The profile really suited him, but they seemed keen to give the red jersey away to the break today. And that's what happened, 36 k's to go, 8 minutes 30, a big gap even with that climb. And with Jumbo Visma not even pacing anymore, the gap started to tumble. 23 k's 7 minutes, 21 k's 6 minutes, and then with 16 k's to go, it's at four minutes. And we've got, it's still a hard climb. If the brake collapses, they can lose a lot of time on that climb. And it didn't help with 15 k's to go about seven k's before the climb. The breakaway's cooperation completely disintegrated with Lillian Colmajan, Grand Tour stage winner, attacking for Azure Deserve Citroën. And they lost even more time as Van Baal and Stibar were getting their riders, Bernal and Bagioli, into position. Rain Tarame caught Colmajan and they started to put pressure on his GC companions whilst at the base of the climb, it was Van Hoydonk and Zidnek Stieber pacing on this steep climb. No other GC teams took it up early. Ineos, Bahrain, Movistar were happy to let them pace for a while until Mark Destroyer of Worlds, Padun, began to pace with 5.6 k's to go. And I was thinking, here we go. But he didn't really split the race up, to be honest. It was curious what Bahrain were trying to do. They were pacing with Padun, but he wasn't riding out of his skin. They were dropping mostly Domestique, still a large group, a headwind on this climb. They weren't eating into Tarame's gap too much. While Poles eventually swapped over, whilst Padun still stayed second wheel, the gap coming down a little bit, whilst the three top riders in that break went clear and dropped Kalmajan. Joe Dombrowski, winner of the Giro stage ahead of Tarame earlier this year, as well as Kenny Elosonde, who was strong in the Tour for Rain Tarame, he's been in breaks over the years with Joe Dombrowski so many times, and their breaks are often very successful. Drops him with 2.8 k's to go, the Estonian on him to Marche. Whilst Bahrain was still pacing, it had good numbers, so they decided to just pace with the headwind with Roglic isolated. Kus dropped really early rather than sending a Padun or Gino Maida up the road and eventually they stopped with Micah then bringing up David de la Cruz who appears to be the GC option for UAE Team Emirates attacking. He's brought back by Padun. Adam Yates would attack and it's Richard Carapaz is the man who will crack the most today on that new not even gold paint job from Pinarello. Perhaps that is the problem with his performance. But Rain Tarame was clear, 900 meters to go, gap of 229. It's not as steep on Picon Blanco compared to the slopes in the middle. And Carapaz was really struggling, even though the GC teams, the pace had come out a little bit. It was Adam Yates had been caught and the soft pacing on the front. The group was still really large when Carapaz had been dropped from it. Yates being closed down by Padun. Chicone had JP Lopez closing things down for him. So it wasn't like it was completely strung out in a group of five or eight riders at this point. And to be honest, the way this was playing out, Roglic wasn't being put under much pressure at all, able to sit in the wheels, despite having no Sepp Kuss, no Stefan Kreisweig, perhaps even though Bahrain didn't really get anything out of today, except for, I guess, distancing certain GC riders. They didn't distance Roglic. Perhaps it has been a good test for them that when they do pace, they can put Roglic teammates under pressure and isolate him, as well as the rest of the Ineos guys, apart from Adam Yates and Egan Bernard. And still with less than two kilometers to go, Adam Yates has been caught by Padun marking him. I guess for Lander, he eases off. This group starts to swell once again. You see it start to fan out. Valverde moving up on the right-hand side. There's three Movistar riders, Lopez, Mas, and Valverde, who looked really good. De La Cruz third wheel, Roglic is starting to move up with Bernal on his wheel, Stora I think moving up Bardet on the left hand side until Valverde 
on the far side decides to split this race apart. So I think given the way Carapaz looked in this race, it's pretty clear that Ineos will go with Yates and Bernal as the one and two leaders. One would think maybe Carapaz isn't lost like five or 10 minutes or anything. Maybe they can still use him in a medium mountain stage. And when you look at the size of this group here with less than two Ks to go and then look at the results, you'd be like, these two don't add up. No one even taking control and pacing at this point. And yet there's huge gaps at the end. Rain RMA will finish with him in a second. He won a Vuelta stage back in 2011. He's joined into Marche. They won the Giro stage with Taco van der Horn. That was a fantastic story how he's on a Conti team. Then into Marche brought him over. They've given Tarame another shot, and 10 years later, he wins another Vuelta stage. 2016, in the middle, he won his Giro stage. And a big win for him, big win for Intermarche, and he'll go into the leader's jersey because behind, it was only now Alejandro Valverde started to increase the pace and immediately Carthy and Vlasso went zoop out the back door. Gino Maida was also in this group for Bahrain, but just sitting in the wheels, he hadn't pulled it all, so... Uh, maybe Bahrain is trying to keep him as a second GC option, I'm not sure, but this was Catalonia Stage 3 battle, reminiscent of that, the battle with him and Adam Yates, just no coos this time. He shreds this group in the last kilometre under the Flamme Rouge here. Really impressive from him and Movistar show of strength at the end. Just a little bit curious that they have three riders in this group and maybe they could have let the wheel go, let Mars go up the road a little bit, bit earlier. He was feeling really, really good. I don't think Roglic would have closed him. Maybe that wasn't the plan because when he does attack just with like 70 meters to go, Yates can't respond. And Miguel Angel Lopez says, not so fast, Enrique, insert Chiellini World Cup meme. I'm chasing you back down. It didn't make too much of a difference, I think, maybe half a second. But just funny seeing Mars chased down by Miguel Angel Lopez, who took a second on Roglic. But here's the final top 10. Rain Tarame, 21 seconds ahead of Dombrowski, Van Sonde, and Carmajan. Mars, three seconds ahead of the other GC contenders, Lopez, Roglic, Yates, Lander, Ciccone, Bernal, and Valverde. But a fair few GC contenders lost significant time, which I count as over 20 seconds. Hugh Carthy lost 21 seconds. Bardet and Vlasov lost the best part of 30 seconds. These are big gaps for guys who were basically there at the Flamme Rouge at the end of Pick on Blanco. And Richard Carapaz lost a fair bit more. Maybe it was a feeding issue, which is a little bit curious on a single mountain stage. He took a, another 20 second penalty to add insult to injury for feeding outside of the authorized zone. So maybe younger flatter, or maybe that was in a completely different part of the race entirely. But Rain Tarame goes into the leader's jersey. Mission accomplished for Jumbo Visma. Rolich is 15 seconds ahead of Mars and the trident of Movistar Lopez Valverde close as well. Although Jumbo will be perhaps a little bit concerned at how easily their domestiques folded on pick on Blanco, leaving Roglic isolated. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it down below if you did. How do you think Ineos, Bahrain and Movistar should play this Vuelta after what you saw on today's stage in terms of attacking Primoz Roglic? I'll leave that thought with you. Till tomorrow. Ciao.